In today's video, we're going to talk about selling shoes on Amazon, and in particular, how you can handle returns of your shoes that you sell on Amazon. Now that's probably not the way you want to start off learning about shoes on Am selling shoes on Amazon is to talk about the returns, but it's a really important question that gets asked pretty frequently whenever we talk about selling shoes and how profitable it can be and why we have added shoes to our Amazon inventory. Right off the bat, people will ask us, but what about the returns? Aren't there a lot of returns on sh of shoes to Amazon? And the answer is yes and no. There are a lot of returns when you sell shoes on Amazon, but that doesn't mean that those shoes are just a complete wash and that you're not going to get any profits from them or get any type of reimbursement or even the ability to sell those shoes again. And so in the rest of this video, I want to talk with you about how we handle FBA shoe returns. So compared to other categories, the shoe category in Amazon does seem to have a higher return rate. But there are ways that we have found that we can still make great profits with shoes. And we do that by taking into, taking into account the different factors that go into shoe returns and then either deciding to pass on certain shoes or how to handle those returns when they come up. And so I want to talk with you about the different ways that you can take a really valid concern about aren't there a lot of shoe returns on Amazon and turn that into a way to handle it so that you are still getting some great profits from shoes. So the first way that you can kind of mitigate your risk and deal with that concern is to pay attention to your ROI and the dollar amount of your profit when you're sourcing. This is a problem that you can really kind of head off at the pass by dealing with it before you even buy the pair of shoes and send them into Amazon and even give the customer a chance to return them. So when you're sourcing, pay really close attention to your ROI and the dollar amount. And this is going to be different for shoes than it is in other categories because if you're selling in a category where you're depending on a lot of really fast volume to bring your profits like either toys or another category or books where you've got really high ROI because you have such a low buy cost, then you're not going to be able to find the same results with shoes. So with shoes, you're going to need to make sure that you're sourcing inventory that has a higher ROI and a higher dollar amount of profits so that if you do get a return, it doesn't completely eat up all your ROI or your profits. So for example, when you're selling toys, you might frequently find inventory and sell it that has a five to $10 profit whenever you get that back. Or it might be in the 20, 30% ROI range and you're selling such a volume that that is still gonna get you really great profits overall. But with shoes, if you only have a $5 profit that you're looking at initially, that's when you source it, you're planning to get a $5 profit, one return of that pair of shoes is going to completely eat up your profits. So you need to make sure that you're getting shoes that will guarantee you a return on your investment and a dollar amount of profits that's high enough, 10, 15, 20 dollars or higher, so that if you do get a return, your return fee is not going to completely eat up all your profit. Now, a second way that you can kind of mitigate your risk while you're sourcing is to make sure that you're sourcing shoes that aren't likely to be returned. Now, you can't completely avoid all returns because you just don't know, especially with something like shoes that people have to try on and they could have they could have picked the wrong size or they might just not like the style or the fit. They're going to possibly return it regardless. But there are types of shoes that are more likely to get returns. And that's different for every seller to make that decision. So I can't tell you absolutely these shoes you should buy and these shoes you shouldn't buy. But there are types of shoes that over time you might find, well, those are getting a lot of returns. The, that style of shoe is getting a lot of returns. I'm not going to buy that anymore. For me, this was knee-high riding boots for women is one because those just fit differently on different feet. And another one is certain types of ladies' heels. Those just are really hard to get a great fit without trying them on, and so those might be returned frequently. And so I just tend to shy away from buying those types of shoes because I know that people are buying them with the intention of, oh, I can just return it if it doesn't fit the way I want. And that does happen frequently. So I just 
source other types of shoes. And another way that you can avoid shoes that are more likely to be returned is by looking at the Amazon product page carefully when you're making your sourcing decision. The things that you need to look at are the reviews. Scroll through the top reviews and see if people are saying, this didn't fit, I had to send it back. It says it's a size eight, but it fits more like a size eight and a five, eight and a half, I sent it back. If you see a lot of those types of reviews, that you might wanna stay away. Or if there's enough reviews and Amazon can compile the data, there's a place on the, pro the top of the product page for your shoes that's gonna give you a percentage of fits as expected or too small, fits too large, and you can see the percentage of people who said that it was somewhat large or very large or fits as expected. And for every seller, you've got to make your own decision what those percentage points are where you pass on a deal or where you will accept a deal. But if the fits as expected percentage is too low for you, then you would know those shoes probably are getting returned on a frequent basis because they don't fit as expected. And that might be a pass for you. So another way that you can deal with the potential of high shoe return rates if you're going to add shoes to your Amazon inventory is to have a system in place for how to deal with them. And that takes out the emotional component of shoe returns. I know especially for newer sellers who haven't been in the business as long, it's really kind of frustrating to get a, a return. And we at times can even take it personally, like, I don't understand, this is a great pair of shoes, or this was a great item, why did they do this? Now I have to deal with it, I'd rather be doing something else, I would rather be making more money, and we make it more emotional than it needs to be. And so putting in place a system for dealing with your returns is a great way to set yourself up for success overall in your business, so that it's just a part of your plan that, okay, I got a return. Here's my checklist for things to look at and how to deal with this. Now I'm gonna deal with it. And you can go from there and trying to figure out, do I need to, can I get a reimbursement for this pair of shoes? Is this something that in Amazon's terms of services, this shouldn't have been returned and so now I can get a reimbursement? Or is this something that I just need to just take it in stride, it's part of the business? Regardless, you need to look at, okay, now I've got this pair of shoes back, what am I gonna do with it? And so you need to have a system in place as well for selling those shoes on other platforms. And we have sold shoes on eBay. We highly recommend keeping an account in good standing on eBay so that you can sell any returns of shoes or other inventory and on eBay as you're dealing with that with Amazon. We also highly recommend for shoes in particular, selling those returns or any damaged items on Poshmark. We've had a lot more success actually selling shoes and some clothing items, but shoes in particular on Poshmark. And you can find out more information about getting signed up to start your selling account on Poshmark at fulltimefba.com slash Poshmark. And we found that the crowd that buys shoes on Poshmark, that buys clothes on Poshmark, really has been a great place for us to present our items in an attractive way. They're really in the market for shoes more than we have found people on eBay to be. And it's been in particular a great way for us to be able to give a lot of pictures, really specific description about these are new shoes, but the box is damaged. These are shoes that were worn once and the tags are still on them, but they're scuffed up. So they're not technically new, but they're pretty much new. You can do that on Poshmark where you can't do that on Amazon. And so it's been a really great way for us not to get the same amount of profits as we would on Amazon, but at the very least to um, get some of our capital back that we spent on investing in those shoes in the first place and to just move inventory out of our storage space. But one of my favorite things about Poshmark is that sales are final. So unlike with eBay or Amazon, where you always have to wonder, am I gonna get these back? There are no returns on Poshmark. If you have listed everything accurately and given detailed pictures, all sales are final. You're buying something as is when you buy it on Poshmark. So it has been a great way to just say goodbye to shoes forever that I'm tired of dealing with returns. So highly recommend that fulltimefba.com slash Poshmark for more information. And if you're wanting to learn more about selling shoes on Amazon in general, and I will say we've gone over a lot of worst case scenarios here and 
a lot of details about how to handle returns. That's the not fun part of selling shoes on Amazon. But there are a lot of really great reasons to consider selling shoes. And so we recommend a course that we have put together for you. It's an ebook and video course that goes from start to success of how to sell shoes on Amazon and get some great profits and increase your Amazon disbursements. You can find out more about the reseller's guide to selling shoes at fulltimefba.com slash selling shoes. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thanks so much for joining us. We would appreciate it if you would like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, we highly recommend that you subscribe to our blog at fulltimefba.com. And if you subscribe by signing up on our email list, you can get some great freebies and we send out frequent emails with lots of tips and tricks for how to sell on Amazon.